What's up y'all? It's me Tasha C and in this particular video I'm going to review recapping the Have and Have Nots season 2, 3-ish premiere because it, I'll put in the description box below but yeah the May 27, 2014 premiere okay because they're saying is either season 2 still by part 2 of season 2 and then some people are saying season 3 but anyways y'all Let's get into it. Shout out to my YouTube fam and my old new subscribers. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button below and like and share this video. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, in today's soap opera, um, we're picking up some of where we left off. Wyatt has, you know, is sitting there in handcuffs. Uh, we're going back exactly to the part that Hannah and Catherine, Kathy, I like all short cat, are talking. And they figured, of course, Phil Cat figures out that Hannah is the one who has told this information. And basically, that's why, 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 one of the reasons that why is now sitting there, um, across from what I, the detective and stuff in interrogation room, or, you know, I don't know where it was at, you know, in the end. And, you know, you know of course, Cat, 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 Catherine, it's like, what did you do, Hannah? And Hannah, you know, basically made like, well, um, in other words, nice way of saying she had to do what she had to do. And she, you know, like, because in the end, that's her son. And she wasn't going to let them just get away with sliding away with that stuff. But, you know, at first, Kat, I'm going to call her, owners, you know, kind of understood, like, you know, I thought you were going to be better than this. You know, thought, like, basically they had a better bond in that. She wanted to st stand from her angle. And Hannah's just like, you know, you had to understand from my angle. That may be your son, but that's my son of there up here, you know. They're saying that he, you know, is a, you know, my son is in this position where he, he is. And, you know, even Cat was trying to, like, do the reverse psychology and try to say, like, well, how you, you know, how would you feel if Benny, you know, was in the same position of Wyatt? And Shannon was like, you know, I would just well, hold his hand and, you know, he would just have to... Do we deal with the consequences of hand because he is at fault for if it would have been who would have been fought for this stuff? And you know, Cat is still trying to, in a way, over exaggerate or you know, try to down you know, over exaggerate as if what Wyatt did did not either occur or like almost like make it seem like Hannah was just out of her darn mind for what she did completely. And then you know, they're going back and forth, you know, because Hannah just like you know, she used to have a friend, you could just tell like. This kind of a conflict. I don't know if they're going to be back friends again or whatever. And then Hannah even brought up a good point. It's like, you've been pacifying Wyatt's behavior. You know, he's been dealing with her. You know, you're not, you're still trying to pay for whatever happened to Wyatt. Because you know, uh, Wyatt and his sister. I I don't even remember her name. I just know she jogging and stabbing folks and shit. But, I mean, other than that, what else? Um, You know, it's whatever occurred, which they don't really go into detail. And I don't know if they go into detail yet. Is about what traumatized them, which may explain why both of them are still in a position as they are as young adults, and they never got over it. And so she's like, you're basically trying to still, you know, make up for what happened to them. And you know, like I said, again, they pacifying that behavior. And about, the, you know, she was basically put her on the spot, like, you know, you know, he's been dealing with addictions and stuff. You know, you can't pretend like he does not have a problem. And, you know, Kat's still trying to be in her thing, like, you know, no, but, you know, she's just really just wished that Hannah wouldn't have done that, even though the fact that this has some to do with her son. So, Jim comes in right by that time, um, a little later on, still with that same jacket. I, I know this must have just instantly, based on, I guess, the sequence is right around the time that, the, where was the, uh, the murder, whatever the family he got, my family, whatever, is supposed to take care of candy and stuff. And, um... And, you know, he's basically coming in there, and even his actions, I swear, he must have, if he, he went to the store real quickly and got, like, the best wh whiskey and, like, down about six shots right before he went into that police station, okay? Because he just came in there already, like, and Hannah, like, what did you do this and this, and you don't know what you're talking about, and you're going to be begging for us for our forgiveness and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, but it's like, you know, Fred, and even Cat kind of at the time was sitting here and kind of maybe was starting to click in about what Hannah said, and she could understand stand from her angle because even when Hannah was trying to get to her a little you know wind back when she was trying to get to her about how she's handling the situation and you know and enabling 
um, Wyatt's behavior. What her response is just to get her to admit that Wyatt was wrong. Her thing was like, your son is at Mercy Hospital and asked for Dr. Such and Such. Hannah's like, come on, come on, say something. Your son is at Mercy Hospital and starts Dr. Such and Such. That's all the heck the cat was saying, right? So, anyways, we, you know, had uh, had that occurring. And, um, you know, at the end, by the time Jim was all trying to be like, you know, you're going to see where you're going to bag and crawl or forget us, whatever st stuff, wh whatever, you know. And um, Hannah was just like, you know how you just look at somebody, but you, you like I I could say something, but I ain't got time to be dealing with that mess. Cause even Cavill's like, you know, you know, because Jim's just sitting there talking stuff. And like I said, probably had a couple whiskey shots, and you know he was definitely think feeling himself in that black uh, uh, black uh um shirt and the matching um leather black jacket. So he really was just you know just on a rampage, especially cause how why it got caught. Cause you know like I said, it was supposed to be hitting under the rug, okay? Um, you know hiding the dirt under the rug. Mm hmm. So, here's another scene. Now, she, um, Hannah does go to go see this new doctor. It was towards the end. And because of money can definitely extend, you know, possibilities, even down to your life in some cases, um, the doctor tells her there is a chance they're going to put him on some aggravated drugs to, like, reduce the swelling, I think, in his brain. I think that's what he was saying. And, you know, at first, you know, Hannah was surprised about that because when she was at the county... They were basically like, well, um, we know some funeral services and get to go. Sorry for your loss. Bye-bye. Next patient. That's pretty much what it was. So, now all of a sudden, Hannah's just so happy to have the hope. And even though it was risk for taking these drugs, she's like, I'd rather sit here and take these chances. Because they told me, basically, my son was dead. Okay. And we already know how she was sitting there in that courtroom uh, when they said he passed away. And basically, on her knees, during about to hold on to... um. Um, ben, ben, Ben's um, um, daddy's ankle just to stop him um, from trying to, you know, get the boy's kidneys. Okay, so and we already see how that uh, how that went down. And um, besides, like I said, this other way, ain't nobody paying attention to Candy in this episode. And like I said, was Amanda, Amanda was still probably. I hope I said that. What is it, her name? Amanda? I don't know. What it is in Cleveland. Whoever white sister, we're just gonna call her. I'll get the name rights again. Heck, it's been a minute. So, Wyatt's sister is somewhere, like I said, we last seen in the last um, finale, when the finale, we seen her up here jogging and stabbing, as I said previous earlier. So, you know, this particular one, you know, we were just dealing with Candy, but Candy's away from everybody else. You know, she's sitting there tying off with a black um, um, silk uh, uh, pillowcase on top of her head, and then she's tied up. And then this woman that must be Mama, I guess Mama, you know, don't fuck with me, um, decide to... Um, you know, let her know her options. And, of course, Candy's going to be tough to the core. You know, she basically, you know, she basically kept saying, get me out of here. Let me out. Let me out. And I'm thinking, like, unless you are a superpower, you can kick everybody's ass in that room, lady, uh, that's not going to work. Or you at least know somebody, you know, is at the door and they know squatting. I'm just saying, your options are very little, okay? The ratio compared to you getting out of this alive, at least tortured free, and, um, you know, and you able to, and you tied up on top of that. I'm just saying, you know. Um, so she's basically telling her, like, giving her some options or whatever. Like, basically, here's a bus ticket from Greyhound. Um, you know, it includes a free crap. I'm just saying, you know, like, here you also get to, uh, to include that you go here, you leave town, go somewhere, leave the family alone, board the kid, and just go about your business. And she says this, boy, if you stay here. You have the choices, you know, we're going to come after you because we're going to make sure he goes in office because he's been taking care of him long for him for years, okay? We tight like this. And we're going to make sure, bitch, you're going to be dead. And we first, we're going to actually, we're going to go in order. We're going to say the best of lies to killing your ass because we're going to make sure to witness that your family members are going bye-bye. So, um, we're going to start and kill your your uh, mom and your brother. And here's Candy's, Candy's response. It's basically like, you know what, Um, let's get this here. Uh, my brother is dead, and I don't like my mom too much, and I ain't afraid to die, I'm a fuck. So she's pretty much like, you know, um, and your point is, and so they basically like, you know, we're gonna come in a month, a year, to make up your mind, or whatever, or whenever we can come back here. I hope you enjoy the darkness, you know, courtesy of us, of you know, people going to torture your ass, and they kept on. So after we're dealing with. The candy, the candy scene and um, the torture chamber um, thing going on or torture in the dark at the moment. 
Uh, we go back to what is going around here when everyone else is finding out about the Wyatt thing and trying to cover up, okay? We got the granddad, you know, trying to call, you know, the granddaughter, uh, his, his grand, uh, daughter, who was in the same crack house, um, getting high with Wyatt when this occurred and also was trying to be witness. So he's calling, uh, trying to call her down because, you know, they got detective, you know, check it in and stuff. Then you got also, um... Another scene in between there when you got, what is his name, Landon. And you know how we already know Veronica is set to force um, a Jeffrey to become um, Jeremy or Jeffrey. I could have sworn it was Jeffrey. Anyway, Jeffrey is supposed to be forced whether he likes it or not in order to keep the end support or, you know, whatever's going on. Or in support, also gets his mother's love from the delusional Veronica. Um... He's going to, you know, try to talk to some chick. And even though Landon broke it down to him, it's like, you sitting here, that's not fair to her. You, like, you want some guinea pig. You try to make her you do a guinea pig experiment, okay? Um, what sense does that make of you going that way? You know, during well, you're not an attractive female. You know, you, it ain't just about, we're talking about, you, are you sexually attractive? We ain't talking about you like a person, you know, with a color of nail polish is. We talking about real life here, like, uh, you're not so attractive. But he's just trying to say, well, I can just try it out. So he's letting them know, like, you know, you go on that guinea pig, you know, stuff route that's not you, you know, who you, you know, who you are. And you're sitting here basically falling for okie doke. Okay, Jamie's like, just like, go to hell, whatever, blah, 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 right? Because, you know, Landon works for Maggie, okay? And we all know how that is going out. So anyways, um, we got, uh, but right at the same time. When they're, when all this is going on, you got David and Veronica on their way back to their house. And you got one of the issues is that, you know, that Veronica's, you know, they're talking about the candy something issue. And, you know, she's talking about she got tricks up her sleeve. She's got that stuff setting because, you know, and then he was, because she's like, candy's trying to destroy everything. So David got his stuff in too. So about, you know, it always seemed like it just, do fast forward a little bit. Um, they're talking about their relationship, you know, the, the you know, Basically, how Veronica's changing a little bit. David's starting, you know, he's sick and tired of certain stuff. Veronica's thinking, like, you no, know, Maggie wants, you know, to do um, more than just to campaign. I guess do little Monica Lewinsky, whatever the heck is going on. Or Mary Monroe, I'm a happy birthday, Mr. You know, I'm just saying this is that uh, she's looking from that angle. And, you know, well, I think it was so they got to the house. But then he's letting know, like, Veronica just seemed to change the worst. And, you know, because it jumped, yeah, first, it jumps to the Jeffrey issue because he's like, you know, how the way you're treating your son and stuff like that. And Veronica is, is, Veronica's issue now is like, he really wants her, him, him, he really, she really wants her vision, what I meant to say, to be to make Jeffrey uh, straight, even though it's not. And that he wants not only him to date gir uh, girls, but also he, she prefers African American girl, black girl, she says. And basically, David is like, you trying to force our son to be something he's not. Like, would you chill with that stuff and just let him be who he is? And that's when she's talking about the Maggie thing and all this other stuff. And he just sitting here, you know, in the front door. Because she's just like, you know, you're going to be in the guest room. And he basically like this. Good. I, you know, I'm going to fluff my pillows up and go to bed and be happy. Because, you know, he, he, that's the point of getting in a relationship. And he let her know, like, the way you acting and stuff like that. He had to remind her, you know, when you were, uh abusing some uh, prescription medications um maybe you must have forgot you know so they having one of those things where you're starting to see the stuff unravel and so when they still talking in front of the you know house and she's bringing the maggie issue maggie when she talked to levin jeffrey because they're still at the campaign headquarters then she decides coincidence to call so of course uh veronica you know took uh his phone um and was just basically like this you know hi um, yeah, um, you're calling at this time of night on a merry man, a merry man's phone. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna have a little etiquette talk. In other words, that might be cold for beating your ass later on, maybe in the season later on, a couple episodes. Huh, and say with a smile, okay, here, here's David. You know, I will catch you in the street, bitch. Bye bye. Um, so he gave, you know, she gives him the phone, and that's when they talk about what, well, you know, why it being in jail. Now, of course. You know, like I said, we already had Hannah. She's got in touch with her son. So, you know, she already quit, you know, so go from there, um, from the criers and everything. And then, now why isn't, you know, it's an interrogation given. But also, by the way, I forgot to mention that the DA for this case, to know, to, you know, get um, Wyatt, 
Now, this is what Jim said. I don't know if he's being sarcastic or this was really what was happening. But he was, you know, because um, Catherine Cat just knew that she, he, she like, you know, Jimmy, Jim touched that, okay? Jim touched it with a Jimmy or, you know, literally or with or without one. I don't know. But he was saying, like, hey, he had a room with her. Um, I don't know, like, if this was sarcastic or not. But he was telling his wife, like, hey, he used to mess with her, you know, during their honeymoon. Had her, like, I guess around the corner. Something like that. He was saying, like, yeah, I was in that, you know, you know, with the honeymoon. So, I'm, just, and, you know, we were having our honeymoon. I was messing with her on off for about a year. So, she, you know, she basically got a grudge, like, some bitterness. And then I think he told David and them about the DA when they got there. And he's just like, you know, um, it, it because of the Malone case and she lost. So I don't know if both of those things is true or not. But the DA is sitting there. She's, you know, because they are trying to get wired for this crime. And so when they do it in the interrogation room, you know, that guess they show the photo of the poor girls, you know, by girls, you know, you know, at first Wyatt, who's in there himself, there's no lawyer, stuff like that, you know, Jim trying to get back in there to see his son and stuff in the council. And he wants to run things. I got this. Like I said, them sh shots of the best whiskey in the liquor store and um, that, you know, that black leather, black leather, um, um, jacket and stuff in that shirt, you know, that's, um. <laughs> that that's what's going on. So, anyways, um, what what happened is that you know why it you know begins to feel good once the policeman comes in there. Let's to be known that obviously the granddad of the little girl was killed. Does call um, does call um you know does catch up with the um his daughter and it confirms that you know that it is him. Just like um. So why, you know, he thought it was crying before, but he kept saying, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, one of the things just in the now. But that's when he started saying, going to thing like, what happened? You know, he, they, he, dudes were trying to go in his pocket stuff. I guess it was outside the house and he, you know, got some scruple with him, but he was able to get away from these dudes. So they were in the car and he drove off, you know, and he's so high, he basically dry with his eyes closed damn near. And that's when he hit the little girl and ended up killing her, I get, you know, and then, hitting Ben and he's in a, you know, still in a coma. And, you know, he was telling that. So that's what's going on. Jim want to run his way about certain stuff. They, David, and they're trying to tell, you know, with the Maggie, because Maggie actually wants to clean up these circumstances um, or do cert certain stuff. And, you know, Jim wants to run stuff his certain way. But like I said, he's already, now he has confessed um, to at least hitting the girl, you know, the process of it. So, it's kind of like, what is next? Because all this was really between, was either between Veronica Davis' house and really at the police station was, you know, and in the hospital, which, like I said, Hannah, um, like I said, was guilt feeling some little guilt, you know, guilt trip, whatever, and realized, like, you know, it was probably best because it also, because, you know, Jim was like, once he realized that Kat sat there and did say, you know, did realize that she did pay and move Ben. Of course, he's mad as hell because he's like, you know what? Didn't I tell you that not to do that? And Kat been, you know, they've been, you know, she just like brushed it off again. And she also looks at from this point. If Ben dies, he can go to jail for that too because, you know, that's murder. If he passes away and stuff. So she's looking at an angle as, you know, it's probably good to keep him alive because, um, that would not, I guess, make it as bad for the case for Wyatt. But yeah, that is kind of like the points that were in this thing. So Jeffrey, I don't know if he's going to sit there and um, take the date or whatever, or what he's going to do next. And, you know, because Landon already let him know that he's attracted to him and stuff like that. But, you know, Jeffrey's all like now trying to force himself to be something that he's not. So... Anyway, y'all, y'all have a pleasant week, pleasant night, pleasant weekend, and I definitely will see you next video, and yeah, take care.